What's up, Liron here, and today we're gonna have a crash course on perspective drawing. What's up, Liron here. Thank you for joining me in another video. And as I mentioned, today we're gonna have a crash course on perspective drawing. I initially wanted to call this perspective drawing for lazy people, but I don't want to insinuate anyone's lazy, uh, but I do want to cram in a lot of material into a relatively short time frame, teach you a whole lot of concepts really quickly, and touch on the core essentials of perspective. And that way, talk about the actual principles, because that way you can continue independently and learn and gain the the specifics, okay? But what I want to talk about is really the, the main rules. It's not going to be too complex of demos. It's going to talk about principles, okay? So what we're going to do is, first off, I'm going to uh, present the subject. Second, we're going to do a demo. And then third, I'm going to show you some artwork and we will look at those through the lens of perspective drawing, okay? And then finally, to really hammer out the point, I will talk about what I think is the main thing to have in mind, which is to observe what you're drawing and you don't have to remember any complex rules or anything like that. All you really have to do is look at your reference, it's right in front of you. So we're gonna talk about that near the end of this video. You wanna stay tuned because I think it's gonna be a really important point that a lot of you will connect with. So first, let's get started with the demo. Okay, so we'll get started and you'll notice that I have a paper here, a page full of frames. Now, the reason I have that is that perspective is something that happens in the context of a frame, okay? It's not something that happens in a in an open openness or just, you know, a blank page. You actually need to frame it up uh, to see how perspective works. So this is why I have all these frames. We're going to start with some simple terminology and I'll explain everything. So first we have perspective lines. And so if you'll just create this small dot on the paper uh, and pull out of that some lines. These are perspective lines. And I actually want to start with the, the goal and the, the whole um, logic behind perspective lines. And let me tell you what they mean exactly. Perspective lines represent a set of parallel lines. So let's put that aside for a moment and take a look at this. Let's imagine we're flying in a helicopter um, uh, from the top and we're looking at a road. Okay, so we'll have the, the actual road, some cars on it, the lines that are dividing it, maybe there's a, a, an extra shoulder for the road. We'll have all sorts of details here, uh, but the, the main idea is if we're looking at it directly from above, we'll have all sorts of sets of parallel lines. So the two lines of the road are parallel if it was built properly, the lines of the sides of the cars are parallel, again, if they were built properly. So what happens is, if we were to draw this scene, but not from above, but rather from the front or from the back, it doesn't matter, or even from the bottom, we'll get something completely different. So now imagine we're lowering our height with the, the helicopter and we're getting to uh, a lower height in which we see the road in front of us and it's moving towards us. So now let's examine this example here. So we have the road, and it's composed of two parallel lines, this line and this line. So these are the lines of the road. And there is the dividing line here. And let's imagine there are actually light poles on the sides of the road. So I'm just going to uh, get these very gently here. So we have this line, this line. Maybe it's power lines. Maybe it's public um, lighting. It could be many things. Let's do these uh, lighting. So you can see here. We have all sorts of uh, light poles. Uh, on the other side, maybe we have some kind of a fence. We can really play around with it and do all sorts of things with it. Okay, we can even have a building or two, like right around here. Let's put a very large building and then maybe a smaller building behind it. And you see I'm very sketchy here, but this gets the point across. We built a scene very easily. It also has cars on it. so. Let's do that. So we have this kind of a car and it's headed uh, towards the, you'll have to forgive my miserable sketching skills at the moment, but it's going into the, the scene. So it may be this car and notice how these lines are these lines. And we may have another scene way, another car, sorry, way at the back over there. Uh, and we may have all sorts of things in this scene, but notice how easily I created this scene using perspective. So 
the lines coming out of that point, imaginary point that we put there, represent parallel lines. So you may ask, what is that point then? That point is an, a representation for infinity, because what happens is that parallel lines meet at infinity. They never actually meet. But when you change your angle, you will notice that lines converge to this imaginary point. And we can put that anywhere we want. I'm going to show you how we put it uh, in this kind of a scene or anywhere else. Okay, so the vanishing point is a representation of these imaginary lines. So let's say I want to just do a painting even of a street scene. I'm going to place the, uh, let's do it even here. I'm going to place uh, the horizon line somewhere, let's see here. Okay because the, the vanishing point will be on the horizon line. We're going to deal just with one point perspective in this video. I don't want to overcomplicate it. Let's say I put it here, not in the center. I'm going to do the exact same thing, pull out some lines out of that dot and try to have them as straight a lines as possible. Okay. Again, then one line represents the street. Then maybe another one for the sidewalk. Maybe the horizon isn't just a clear horizon. Maybe it's a mountain scene here at the background. Okay. Maybe we have mountains, maybe it's even sunset. So we have an interesting lighting condition. Maybe it's a desert. So there's barely any traffic. There's barely just one car here. Now what happens in this scene is that we heightened our angle a bit compared to this one. And I'm going to talk about that in just a moment, but notice how these lines stretch a little more on the previous example. And here I kind of squeeze them together. This happens when we change the angle a bit or the dimensions of the road or our distance from the scene. Uh, this is a little bit advanced. I don't want to get into that too much, but the main idea of one point perspective, again, is you just place the dot, pull out lines from it, and you have to think about which lines are parallel. So if we put again, maybe uh, electricity poles here. So the electricity poles are uh, all vertical but the distance uh, between them is equal and they're all in one straight line, which is why they also fall on one of these uh, uh, perspective lines. Okay, so we have these kinds of things here. Now, the closer they are to us, their distances also grow because everything gets larger. Okay, so this is another thing you want to pay attention to. I'm going to put all these different electricity elements here. Maybe they move to the other side of the road. Who knows what's in here? Maybe it's an electric tram. So you get all sorts of these lines. Okay. So it all works in the context of perspective. So now I want to talk to you about the horizon line because that's a really important topic. The horizon line basically dictates the height from which we are observing the scene. Okay. So let's imagine this. Let's imagine I want to convey a very tall building scene. I'll probably place the horizon line very low. The reason why is that it will actually allow me to convey the height of the buildings. Okay. So if I'm going to throw in a building here, it's going to be much more, uh, much taller and more, uh, let's say, looming over us, if that's a word. Okay, and, and I'm, I'm doing this very abstractly. Notice I'm not doing too much here uh, to actually give you details, but hopefully this, the, the fact that you can still understand what you're looking at, hopefully, is enough of an attestment to how this works. Okay, so we have a few buildings here, one at the, a little more the distance, but the fact that I placed the horizon line lower allows us to look at the height of this, the buildings. Now, if I have this scene and I would have placed the horizon line here, there's not enough room for us to look at the buildings. In fact, what we'll end up doing is looking at the, the road or the highway or the street or whatever it is we're looking at. So notice something here. What kind of a feeling does this road convey? And I'm going to just add maybe uh, a car here just to better um, improve your sense of the scene. So there's imagine a car here. Okay. And hopefully it looks like a car. That's just me scribbling away. But imagine this. Okay, there's a car here. Uh, there are some as we sh we've shown earlier, some light or electricity poles here. So if you look at this scene, and if you look at this scene, the feelings you get are very different. This almost feels like we're looking at the road from above. Well, here it's we feel like an ant because you notice the height. So the height of the horizon line represents how tall we are. In fact, what cuts 
the horizon line is our height. Okay, and I know that's a bit of a complex topic, so let me demonstrate exactly what I mean. Let's place the horizon line here, okay? And we have uh, another street, and this time let's have it kind of go sideways. It doesn't really matter, okay? So here we have the sidewalk, we have all sorts of things. Now, let's put some people in this scene. So I'm just gonna place this, uh, this woman here, maybe. So that's a person. They're just standing. There's another person a little closer to us. And he's kind of, maybe he has his, and again, I'm very abstract here. Maybe he has a shopping bag with him. There's another person right here to the side. And you may be wondering, what am I doing here? And why is this person standing on the road? Be careful. So what I'm actually doing here, notice what happens when the people's heads are at the height of the horizon line. That's our height. When you walk down the street, this is the usual scene you'll see. Why? Because your height is somewhat probably similar or average to the other people's height around you. Granted, if there's gonna be someone shorter, their head, maybe it's a kid, or maybe it's just a short person. So their head is gonna be much, and maybe it's his mother, and maybe they're holding hands. Um, his head is gonna be under the horizon line. If it's an extremely tall person, their head may be above the horizon line, okay? But generally speaking, all of these people are at the same height. If we're just looking at the scene, their heads coincide with the horizon line, meaning this is our height. We're looking at it from a, a, a person's uh, height, okay, approximately. Now, if we look at this kind of scene, I could draw the people at the height of the horizon line. That'll actually, because we don't have an, a lot of details here, that'll actually hint that it's at the height of a person. It'll probably make the buildings seem a little taller, but I could decide that we're very, very low, even lower than that. So if I'll just draw this kind of an ant, okay? And I'm not really an ant artist, so I, I hopefully will get it right. But this is an ant and it has several legs. Now we're so short and let's add maybe a grass blade or two. And immediately we get the feeling that we're really, really short and maybe a person, maybe if we put a person here, his legs are gonna be the size of the entire scene. See what I'm getting at here? The, the thing that intersects the horizon line is representative of our point of view, okay? So if our point of view is the height of a person, all the heads of the people will intersect the horizon line. Uh, if you remember, I painted a scene of rooftops, uh, which, which I don't show you in this video, but uh, I will, uh, you remember it, you can check it out on my Instagram as well. If you remember, the horizon line was very tall. And then we had this kind of a uh, road moving inwards, and then we had all of the buildings on the road. I don't know if you remember this, there was this uh, um, zebra stripes here, we had all sorts of things, there were some buildings here at the front, there was a round building here if I'm not mistaken, but in any case, notice the horizon line is here, and the person, for example, crossing the street on their bicycle was this height. So what happens here? That's a person, hopefully you can realize what I did here with the abstraction, it's very abstracted, but basically we had these buildings here. Okay, so these are all buildings, and they cast a shadow on the, the ground. Maybe I'll just add a few more details. I will show you again examples of my own work in just a moment, and you'll realize better realize these things. But what this says is this is our height. So if there's a very tall building here that coincides with the horizon line, we are at the height of this building. Okay, we're not at the point of view or height of this person here on the road. We're at the height of this building. Let me give you another example. So uh, let's say, here it's very simple. So the very first example I showed you, and I have this car and I have all of these uh, light poles or whatever they are. Do you see this point where they intersect the horizon line? That's our point of view's height. So if I were to put a person right next to that light pole, he'll be approximately, or she'll be approximately this height so you see, this is a nice trick for knowing what size your people should be in perspective and such things. So what you want to do really, and I'm going to talk about it in, in a few moments, is play around with the horizon lines height, practice doing these very, very simple uh, scenes, and just try and figure out what happens if the horizon line is really 
low? Uh, what happens if I put it really high? What happens if my perspective moves completely to the left like this? Or maybe I have several roads and I'm looking at them from the center. Uh, what kinds of elements I can add, maybe some rocks, maybe it's a building. A very common example is the um, train train uh, rail tracks or railroads. So you get these kinds of railroads. You try to slowly figure out what it is you're doing. Uh, maybe you want to uh, draw a scene in which you're shorter than everyone else. So maybe a person is going to be uh, this tall, like this. And you'll be looking at it from a knee uh, height okay, level, if that makes sense. There's a very tall person here, but still his knees are the part that meets the ground. There's a person much closer to us, let's say around here. It's very huge, it's, so it's outside of the frame and you can barely see it, but that's how tall the person is. And still we are at the height of their knees. You see what I, what I did here? So... This is the whole idea with uh, the horizon line. So let's conclude because this ended up being, of course, longer than I expected. But generally speaking, so a perspective has to happen inside a frame. You can understand now why, because if we wouldn't have done the frame, it would have been a little harder to conceptualize the scene. We have the vanishing point representing of an, um, a, a point that doesn't exist, but it does represent where the parallel lines meet. So. It can be to the sides, it can be uh, a little higher, a little lower, depending on where the horizon line is. But it will sit on the horizon line. I know this video is going to uh, evoke a lot of questions, so feel free to drop a comment below. Uh, and then we have uh, the, the perspective lines coming out of that uh, vanishing point, representing parallel lines like these two lines. We may have several sets of parallel lines, so we may need more than one perspective point. This is something a little more advanced we'll cover in a future video. Um, and also uh, the horizon line's height, which represents how tall we are. And the height physically on the scene could be the same, but represent different heights. So for example, you see this, this scene, the height is about maybe uh, uh, a third from the top. Here the height is the same, it's also about a third from the top but the scenes are very different. Why? Because I placed all the rest of the elements differently. Here, I did the people at our head's height at a point of view of a normal person, but here I placed them so that their knees will intersect with uh, the horizon line, and this is why we get this kind of thing, okay? So it's a matter of comfort. Some scenes, it will just make more sense to put the horizon line lower, like here from a lower angle. I would have preferred to put it lower. I don't know why I put it here, so that I can actually show the, the entire, um, how tall a person is. Okay, so with scenes that we're looking at from a lower angle, the horizon line will automatically kind of demand us to place it a little lower. But on the other hand, from scenes like this one, it will automatically demand us to put it higher. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now we're gonna demo all of that using my own uh, paintings. So let's get started with that. Okay, so now hopefully you've seen uh, the technique and how I do this, the simple, very simple terms of perspective lines, vanishing point uh, and horizon line. Now hopefully that that's clear to you. Now I'm gonna explain all of this uh, using these scenes that I painted. Uh, and I brought this a little closer so you can see some of the details, but we're gonna basically look at it through the spectrum of perspective, okay, through the lens of perspective. So the, uh, the point of view here in terms of height, it's about the, the height of a person. Okay, the, the horizon line is situated uh, a third from the bottom, so that gives us enough room to take a look at the, the taller areas. And because the people, again, if you look at their heads, they kind of coincide with the horizon line. I would say we're at the height of the, these cars or the tops of the cars. Now we have a road and the, the perspective is very gentle here. The, the gentler the perspective is, the harder it is to, to draw and to understand sometimes. But let me give you the simplest example to find it out. You just pull all of these zebra stripe lines and you check where they converge, okay? So you'll end up finding out that the vanishing point is somewhere around very far away and also I made some mistakes with them but something somewhere around here okay this is where the vanishing point is gonna end up being if you even connect this car here 
the top part and the lower part, you'll end up somewhere around here. It's very confusing because the building has a very unique shape, so it doesn't necessarily conform to that vanishing point fully. I would say this line uh, here, the imaginary, you can barely see it, but hopefully uh, that makes sense, okay? So we have the horizon line rather low, a vanishing point around here, and we're dealing with the scene and the people and all of that. Okay, next up. So we have this scene based on uh, a view from uh, Ohio, uh, the Amish country, beautiful, beautiful area. Now here, I'm going to hold it up a little closer. Uh, if you look at it, the, the horizon line is somewhere around here. And you can see this where the road is winding towards. So that person here is a little lower than the horizon line, meaning we are looking at it from a bit of a higher angle. We're actually at the height of approximately this, okay, where the horizon line meets these electricity poles, okay? Now, there is something important you have to realize about this scene, and that is this is at an angle downwards, and that will affect it, okay? If this was a straight um, uh, plane, uh, you will have all of these things a bit higher, okay, a bit taller. Uh, so that also influences the scene. Now, the, the perspective, generally speaking, we just follow these guiding lines that I place here that hopefully you can see now and you see where they and the road will lead you so the vanishing point is somewhere around here outside of the scene okay but this again gives you another understanding of the, the height of the uh, horizon line now if we talk a bit about composition compositionally it's smart to place it not in the dead center maybe a little lower a little higher that allows for a better composition better uh, way of focusing on one of the two parts Next up, let's look at this one. This is a painting I did as an experiment of trying to paint more realistically and be very loyal to the source. It was a nightmare, but I, but I liked the end result, but it was a nightmare. I didn't enjoy the process as much. Uh, but in any case, what I wanna show you here is very interesting because we're looking at a small part of a very large scene, the perspective becomes uh, insignificant. So these lines are almost entirely parallel the reason why is, imagine this is a part of a larger scene, so you'll have this line, this line, and slowly but gradually the perspective will play a role. But because we're looking at one focused, zoomed in part of the perspective, there's barely any difference between this line's angle and this line. Very, very gentle. So all of these diagonal lines you see here are effectively parallel. So if you're focused on one part, sometimes perspective becomes irrelevant. If you're, let's take the most extreme example, if you're painting a person's portrait, you don't care about perspective. You don't care that their nose is a little closer to you than their eyes because their eyes are in the eye sockets and the nose is protruding out of the face. You don't care about these kinds of things because the difference between them is so insignificant. Same thing goes here. All of these areas in the grand scheme of things are really close together, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so that's it for this one. Now here we get a bit of a larger scene. So imagine that the previous building, just imagine that the previous uh, building I showed you is maybe just this part, okay? So if you look at this part, there isn't an awful lot of difference between this line and this line, you see in this line. It gets larger the, the wider the scene is, okay? So here's another scene. This time I really wanted to show how tall these buildings in the background are. So I place the horizon line very low. Okay, so if you want to convey height, the horizon line has to be significantly lower to allow you to show all of that. Now, if you want to find the, the vanishing point and the horizon line, just connect all of these parallel lines and where they meet somewhere around here, that's your horizon line, okay? So uh, this is relatively simple. Another good example uh, of this uh, very interesting scene that I came across here in Tel Aviv. So if you notice, this is the horizon line because the sky starts here, the road ends vanishing point around here. So we are a little lower angled. So because we're at the height of this person's hand, maybe arm, maybe it's a very tall person. Maybe I made a mistake with proportions, but this is generally speaking the idea and everything merges. Even this part of the cart of the horse, it all merges into the vanishing point. Even these buildings in the very background all converge to the vanishing point. These lines also, a line that doesn't converge, for example, is this shadow that comes from the whatever it is over there. So this doesn't go there. This line isn't converging to the vanishing point, obviously, but all of these lines do, okay? And if we had another sign closer to us, we'd also use perspective to assess what height it should be, okay? Hopefully uh, that makes sense. 
and we have this scene, I think another one afterwards, and that's it. So uh, this scene that I also, also showed you also make a lot of use of perspective here. It all conforms to that imaginary vanishing point. Now we're looking at a street that goes downwards. So what happens in these instances is if we connect these lines, the horizon line seems to be here. But funny enough, the street is much lower. That's the impression created when looking at a road goes downwards. If it would, would have gone upwards, we'd have the opposite impression of the lines converging at a higher point than the actual horizon line is, in fact, okay? This is a bit complex. I will do a follow-up video probably uh, in the near future, but hopefully that makes sense. All of the lines converge to the vanishing point. The people seemingly were higher than them, but once again, this scene goes downward. So if these lines all converge somewhere around here, you would assume that we're in this height and we're taller than the people. We may in fact be another person looking at them, but because we're at a higher part of the road, we are at this height. See what I mean? If there was another uh, couple here or a person walking, they would have been even shorter Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. And the last scene that I did uh, outside a uh, short while ago with these kinds of scenes, the perspective is generally pretty uh, gentle with this one in particular. I made a mistake, made this person too short, it should be about this tall. But in any case, the perspective here is quite gentle, but you still have to be very careful in, in, in planning it out. Sometimes the more the vanishing point is to decide the more gentle the perspective is gonna be. Makes sense? Because what happens is all of these line cons lines converge to a point over here somewhere, okay? So the difference between them decreases. If the vanishing point was here, we'd have these kinds of lines. Move, the, move it to the side right over here, and the lines are a little more, you see, there's a less of a difference between them, which makes it a little more challenging to draw. Okay, so this is it. I hope the explanation was clear. I tried making it as easy as possible. Now, before we wrap up this video, I do want to go uh, to move to the extra tip I told you I would share with you. This is really important, okay? If you're uncertain of how to use the rules of perspective, where the horizon line should be, uh, where the vanishing point is, how the lines go, what are the angles, if you're uncertain, the answer is always in front of you, okay? Just observe your reference, take a good look at it, frame it up. If you're painting outside or drawing outside, frame it up, observe it closely, you'll have answers to all of your questions. You don't have to remember rules, you don't have to bring your rulers with you. All you have to do really is observe the scene. This circumvents everything. And I, I refer to this tip when I talk about sketching figures and people, when I talk about all sorts of things that you wanna do, the, the answer is always in front of you. Just observe it, measure, compare, make sure, do a double check, ask someone else to take a look and tell you were you accurate or not. Um, you don't need to remember any of the rules we discuss here really. All you have to do is really carefully observe your reference. Okay, so hopefully that wraps things up nicely. Uh, I did try to make this lesson as clear and as well constructed as possible, like my courses that are very linear and very easy to understand, I think. Um, hopefully I wasn't too all over the place. I'm sure uh, this um, will bring up some questions that you may have about measuring, how things go into the distance, stuff like that. This is really advanced. Let me know if there's any follow-up questions, if there's anything uh, you want me to cover in a future video. I promised myself and you that I'll make a, kind of a quick beginner's video on perspective and hopefully this answers uh, the question. It's not that quick, it's a bit of a longer video now, but it does consolidate a lot into it, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Let me know what you think, comment below, subscribe if you still aren't subscribed, and I will see you again in another vid real soon.